This week we are at home and we are in Chicago driving the 2020 Subaru Outback. This is all new for the 2020 model year and though I've driven it before in a first look preview, this is my first chance to drive it on my home turf. So let's see how it did. One of the first things you should know about the 2020 Outback is that it will have two engine options. The base engine is going to be a 2.5 liter direct injection boxer engine that will deliver 182 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque. Now the up-level engine, which will be in the XT models, which is what we've been driving this week, will have a 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer engine. It'll deliver 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. Now, though Subaru says that this engine is going to be fuel efficient, I'm gonna say in my test week, I found it not to live up to what they said it would do. It should get about 30 miles per gallon on the highway, and I've been doing a lot of highway driving this week. I only got about 20 miles per gallon. So if you expect this to live up to the EPA estimates, just be prepared that that's a little bit of a downer here. The other thing that you should know about the Subaru Outback is that it comes with a lot of great standard technology. In addition to having standard all-wheel drive, because pretty much every Subaru does have standard all-wheel drive, it also has standard EyeSight. This is Subaru's safety suite, and basically it includes things like adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, and lane centering technology. It also has standard automatic high beam assist. For you tech geeks out there, you'll also be pleased to know that the base Subaru comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There are also some really great up-level features, and one of my new favorite features has to be automatic reverse braking. And this will help you out when you're backing into a parking space or backing out of a parking space, and there's some kind of low-lying object that you can't possibly see out of the rear view camera or in your rear view mirror. This will save your vehicle from a lot of low speed rear end collisions. Another really cool feature that is available on Outback is the driver focus feature. We've talked about this before on the Subaru Forester, but it is now available on Outback. It's basically facial recognition. And when you sit in the car, the vehicle will scan your face and recognize who you are, and it will automatically preload your presets from the last time you drove the vehicle. This is an especially helpful feature if you have two drivers in your household. It can recognize up to five drivers. The base Subaru Outback will come with a small touchscreen audio display, but available will be a very large 11.6 inch, very beautiful touchscreen display. I like this display specifically because it has very large buttons that are easy to recognize and easy to push while you are driving. This is a great centerpiece in the Outback, and we're starting to see it roll out on other Subaru vehicles as well. Another interesting thing to note about this display is, yes, the HVAC controls are at the bottom in the screen. But there's really two processors for two different screens that blend together. So, therefore, they both act independently of each other, which means that one doesn't slow the other down. There are also a few redundant HVAC controls with hard buttons on the side. For 2020, Outback will have seven trims. You'll start with the base, then you will have the premium, limited, and touring. Those are all with the 2.5 liter base engine. Then you will go to your XT trims, which will be XT Onyx, XT Limited, and XT Touring, and those will all have the up-level 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. The base price is going to be $27,655, and if you want to go all in for the XT Touring, like we have here, you're looking at just more than $40,000. Now, one of the interesting things about the Subaru Outback is it's bigger and a little bit wider than the Subaru Forester. And I find that a little bit odd because the Forester is definitely considered to be an SUV, whereas this is more on the wagon side of things. However, it still does really well in a city environment. I've been driving this in Chicago for a week and I found that it parallel parks really easy and if you can get a little bit of a sense of this area, this is my driveway, um, it does pretty well doing a three point turn to get into my garage, which is right there. So turning radius is really good 
for an urban situation. After spending a week in this vehicle, I want to say that I really like how it looks. I love these wheel covers. I think they're very pretty. I love the trimming and the cladding here, even though you can see it, it's not that noticeable. I really, really love this piece here where it shows the Outback and it's, it's raised and it has a very nice feel, a very nice look to it. Once you get inside the vehicle, everything is comfortable. I have to say the, the word that I would use most to describe the Subaru Outback is comfortable. The seats are comfortable, the leather is comfortable, the steering wheel is comfortable, and even the ride and handling are super comfortable. We have a lot of potholes and rough hewn streets in Chicago, and even though this didn't glide over every uneven surface, it did a very nice job of handling it and making sure that you went smoothly over the rough surfaces. Now, even though this is a top tier trim, there were a couple of little things that kind of disappointed me. And one of them is when you get into the back seat. I'm in a far forward driving position. And if you look underneath the seat, you can see some unfinished bits um, with some cotton fluff sticking up out of it. That was a little bit of a disappointment to me. Granted, if somebody was a normal sized individual, you probably would never see it, but because I'm five feet tall and I've got my seat far forward, it's very obvious and very noticeable. I'd also like to point out that the USB ports in the back are not standard. You do get two USB ports standard up in the front, but not in the back. And since this is a family vehicle, I think that's also a little bit of a mess. But I have to say, overall, everything else is a huge win. I love all the soft touch surfaces. I love the way the leather in this top tier Touring XT trim looks. And I really, really just think this is a great and comfortable vehicle. After spending a week with this Subaru Outback in Chicago, I think this is a great family cruiser, but it's also a really great commuter car. There's plenty of room in the back for groceries, for strollers, for anything that you would need to fit back there. And it's going to be comfortable for both front seat passengers as well as rear seat passengers. I really like the Subaru Outback the first time I drove it, and I have to say, after spending a week with it, I like it even more. The first will be a 2.5 liter direct injection boxer engine. It'll deliver, ugh, of course, 182, 176. It'll deliver, it'll deliver 187 horsepower and 176 pound-feet of torque. 82, 182. The first is going to be a 2.5 liter direction jet. Now in the base Subaru, you're gonna get a itty bitty touch screen. 11.6 inch. <clears throat> I live in the city, it's loud. Train, 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 okay. Okay, I'm gonna read through this and then I'll try and say it. Mm. Hiya. Hey, doing? Just doing a video of the car. Oh, the, the, the review, huh? Yeah. I do reviews too, huh? What year is that one? This is a 2020. Outback. Yeah. Yeah, car. It is a good car, I really like it. Yeah, hope, hope, hope it goes well. Thank you. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out is that even though this is a top tier trim, <clears throat> this is really only available on the top tier trim. I don't think that's true, actually. 